In the far northeast of China, in the heart of the Songliao Plain, lies the city of Changchun, the capital of Jilin Province. However, if you could travel back in time about 90 years or so, you wouldn't be standing in a city called Changchun. You'd be standing in the capital of Manchukuo, the Japanese puppet state. And you'd be standing in the city of Xinqiu or Xinjing, which translates into English as new capital. In Chinese, Jing means capital. If you look at the capital of China, Beijing, it's the same character for Jing, and Beijing literally translates into English as northern capital. In Chinese, they call Tokyo Dongjing, which translates into English as eastern capital. You can hear it in the Japanese pronunciation as well. Tokyo is the capital, and Shinkyo was the Manchukuo capital. They both have the same ending sound of Kyo, which means capital. Since my channel is mainly centered on China-related things, we'll refer to this former capital by the Chinese name Xinjing for the remainder of this video. Japan chose this city as their capital because they liked the location, with its railways to Korean ports and access to shipping lanes that could sail them back and forth from Japan to Manchukuo with convenience. Being that Japan was running things and the last emperor, or Puyi, was just a puppet of the Empire of Japan, by title he was the last monarch in dynastic China, which belonged to the Qing dynasty. But it was Japan who was in charge, and they had chosen this as their capital, the new capital, and they wanted it to be a great place, a city that would be a testament to their strength, pride, governance, and beneficence. The Japanese army on the ground in Manchukuo at the time was called the Kwantung Army. At the height of their power in Manchukuo, their forces stood over 750,000 strong. The old headquarters of the Kwantung Army still stands today, but it has been repurposed for the office of the Jilin Provincial Committee. The final plan for the design of Xinjing was approved by Kuniaki Koiso, the chief of staff of the Kwantung Army, and Yasuji Okamura, the vice chief of staff. The plan for the layout of the new Manchurian capital was to cover an area of 200 square kilometers, or approximately 77 square miles. The 19th century renovation plan of Paris, which was known as the Garden City Movement, as well as American city planning themes and designs, played a major role in the design of Xinjiang City. They implemented extensive tree planting as well, and by 1934, Xinjiang was known as the forest capital. Jingyuetan Park was created, which still exists, and is now China's largest plantation and a quadruple A rated recreational area. I'll put a map on the screen showing the Japanese plan and map of Xinjiang, and the modern day map of Changchun City, and you'll see that it still largely remains the same until this very day. I want to show you around Changchun and take you to see some of the impressive relics built by Japan during their imperial rule over Manchukuo. The main area we're going to take a look at is known as Badabu, or the Eight Grand Ministries in English. These were the following facilities during Japan's occupation of Manchuria. The Ministry of Public Safety, Ministry of Justice, Ministry of Economy, Ministry of Communications, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Culture and Education, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Civil Affairs. During the Manchukuo occupation, most of these facilities were located on Shuntian Avenue, which now exists as Xinmin Avenue. The avenue was designed as two separate lanes running parallel, north to south, with a strip of garden running in between. Nowadays, at the north end of the avenue, you'll see Culture Square, which happens to be the second largest square on planet Earth second only to Beijing's well-known Tiananmen Square. 
Initially, they were going to build a new imperial palace for Puyi on Culture Square, but due to their hasty departure in 1945, they never got around to it. Instead, a beautiful museum was built on the lot, or more specifically, the Jilin University Geological Palace Museum. Nowadays, at Culture Square, you'll see people exercising, flying kites, children playing with their parents and friends, and university students just walking around, with their brains deeply engrossed in academic daydreams, with the occasional fleeting distraction of a classmate that they happen to have a crush on. But hey, weren't those the days? Just to the east, over near People's Square, you'll see a very unique-looking branch of the People's Bank of China. But back in the 1930s and 40s, that was the Central Bank of Manchukuo. I found a little placard over here and I want to share it with you all. It was built in 1938 with a style of Western classical architecture and used to be Manchurian Central Bank. It became an operating agency of Jilin Provincial Branch after Industrial and Commercial Bank of China was founded. Still has the Japanese doors. Not far from there, you'll see what used to be the Manchukuo Telephone and Telegraph Company. The building is still the same, but it now houses China Unicom. As you make your way to the southern end of Xinmin Avenue, you'll end up at Xinmin Square, circled by a big roundabout that looks nice, but makes for some very interesting, or should I say precarious, traffic situations and a steady flow of fender benders. Changchun is littered with such roundabouts, and the only ones that seem happy about it are the auto insurance companies because it gives them ample opportunities to jack up those premiums. Jeez, thanks a lot, Japan. I'll take you guys for a little stroll through this old square that was designed by the Japanese over a hundred years ago. Shinmin Square, ladies and gentlemen. I've got to say, this square is a nice getaway from the concrete jungle because it, it's not crowded, a lot of trees, and it's just a little natural enclave right here in Changchun City. Now, let's dig a little deeper and take a look at some of these eight grand ministries that were built by Japan right here in this area and take a look at what they were then and what they are now. Keep in mind, these are the original buildings, unless otherwise noted. If you make your way up north from Culture Square, you can find what used to be the Foreign Affairs Ministry of the Japanese-controlled Manchukuo. It was built in 1934 and now exists as a spa and clinic. Prior to this, it was a high-end Cantonese restaurant, and according to what I read online, I assumed it still would be. However, I spoke with a security guard there, and he said that the Cantonese restaurant went out of business nearly 10 years ago. Come on, Wikipedia, get your act together. Then, if you swing a few blocks east, you'll find what used to be the Manchukuo Civil Affairs Ministry, built in the 1930s and still stands today, but is now being used as the Petrochemical Institute of Jilin Province. Oh, I 
If we head southward just a short ways, we can see what used to be the Manchukuo Education Ministry. And while I believe this is not the original structure, it was right on the same plot and now stands as an elementary school. If we work our way back toward Xinmin Square, we'll soon pass what used to be the Manchukuo Agricultural Ministry back in the 30s and 40s, but now stands as a public middle school. I do not believe this one is the original structure. The rest throughout this video will be the originals, however. And as we get closer to Xinmin Square, we'll come to an original structure built in 1938 that used to be home to the Supreme Court within the Manchukuo Puppet State, but now serves as a hospital. As we start making our way north from Xinmin Square, we'll soon pass what used to be the Manchukuo Communications Ministry, built in 1937. And the original structure still stands strong today, serving as home to Jilin University's public health school. Not far from here, we'll see the former ministry of the Manchukuo government, Finance Ministry, built in 1939, that serves as home to present-day Jilin University Second Hospital. Just across the street from here, you'll see what used to be the Justice Ministry, built in 1936, serving as home to present-day Medical School of Jilin University. As we walk a bit further north up this beautiful avenue, we'll soon stumble into a facility that was built in 1938 and was the Public Safety Ministry of the Manchukuo Puppet Government. And the building still stands in good condition as home to Jilin University First Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Just across the street from here, you'll see an impressive building that was built in 1936 and served as the state council to the Japanese-controlled Manchukuo puppet government and today houses Jilin University Medical Center. This was formerly the General Affairs State Council, an executive-level government facility housing a prime minister and a cabinet. The ministers comprising this cabinet were all ethnic Manchu or Han Chinese, but their vice ministers were all, unsurprisingly, Imperial Japanese Army officers appointed by the Kwantung Army. The remnants of Imperial Japan in modern-day Changchun go much deeper than what you've seen here, but I've presented you with some of the main buildings of note. The buildings, while a constant reminder to the locals who are keenly aware of their history, may serve as a constant painful reminder of the past. But they also stand as relics of a very unique time in modern history, and due to their unique design and aesthetics, give Changchun City an appearance and feel that you literally won't find 
any place else on Earth. The reality is that a lot of people just walk past or into these places day to day without thinking twice. But if you study the history and know what once was, in this city that was once called Xinjing, you'll see reflections and images of a time past. You'll see the shadows of Imperial Japan. You'll feel the pain of the subjected locals. And your mind can take you on a journey through a city that still exists in location, but not in name or leadership. The former capital of the Japanese-controlled state of Manchukuo. The new capital. Xinjing, Xinkyo. The fossils are still here, but the reality that took place on this ground now exists only in history books, documentaries, and even within the hearts and minds of some of the older generation who lived through those times and are still living today. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Xiaozi, zaijian.